Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am a PhD student at the University of Quebec at Chicoutimi and I am here today, today to present our approach in the field of runtime verification on behalf of my supervisors at the University, Professor Rafael Khouri and Professor Silvana Lee. As we know, runtime verification is the process of observing a sequence of events produced by a running software system and determining whether this sequence satisfies a given property expressed in the formal notation. Depending on the context, the source of events given to the monitor may come from instrumentation instructions manually inserted inside the system's code or from logging statements normally produced by the system or from external readings of devices such as sensors, packets sniffed from communication links or a combination thereof. Despite the variety of event types and event sources that can be used for analysis, a widely held assumption in RV is that the monitor has complete and error-free access to the set of events against which to evaluate a given property. However, this assumption is not completely warranted because there exist multiple situations where the source of events can be incomplete and can contain corrupted or uncertain events. We group under the term access restrictions all conditions that cause a source of events to become imperfectly known by the monitor. First, we shed some light on the most commonly occurring causes and situations that lead to the logging of incorrect information or to the corruption of the existing information in the logs in a way that affects the monitoring process. The first obvious cause for the presence of incomplete and uncertain log information is the corruption of logs for various reasons such as hardware failure. A monitor receiving such a piece of corrupted log could, for example, know that some event occurred without being able to ascertain for sure what event happened due to its corrupted nature. Incorrect instrumentation or logging is another cause of the presence of incomplete information in a source of event. In cases where the source of events is the execution of a software system, the correct monitoring of a property is dependent on the fact that the system provides all the relevant events to the monitor. However, this hypothesis may be unwarranted in cases when logging statements are manually inserted by the developers Moreover, each logging statement is typically assigned a severity level, and studies have shown that usage of these levels by developers can be highly unreliable. An event source can be imprecise and, un and uncertain. For example, a temperature reading produced by a sensor can be associated with an error range such as 20 degrees plus or minus 0.5 degree. A monitor evaluating a property that produces different outcomes depending on whether the temperature is less than 20 degree or, or the temperature is greater than or equal to 20 degree may produce an incorrect verdict for a range of values of the temperature T. Also, in many cases, feeding an event to a monitor involves an additional amount of work for the executing system. A possible solution is to make load shedding, which consists of deliberate deletion of events in order to reduce resource consumption. The obvious solution for this problem is to find a suitable approach to fill in the gaps that may exist in an input trace. An approach to represent the missing and uncertain events in a gap and produce a tighter verdict. The better the approach is, the more precise the produced verdict will be. Many approaches aim to provide a runtime verification model that can work in the presence of incomplete information. However, these approaches focus on designing monitoring algorithms that are tolerant to missing or uncertain events. However, we shall, we shall see that they present some limitations in the kind of information degradation they can account for. Most of them use complex statistical models to, to model 
to model the gaps that may that may exist in in a trace. Some of them use complex formalisms that are hard to grasp, and some of them account for complete loss of events and did not account for the presence of uncertain events. Also, most of the pre-existing works in this field do not cover a wide range of data uncertainty and data loss use cases. In this paper, we present a formal model to account for access restrictions in a monitoring context. As we see, an event source may, may contain missing events, uncertain events, uh, and a corrupted events. Monitoring a security property written in a given formalism will affect the monitoring process and the produced verdict altogether. We aim to enumerate various situations of data loss and imprecisions and represent some use cases that are not studied in the literature. We present simple formal representation of the degradation of events using the concept of word preservation. The monitor, the monitor we, we create allow to produce a tighter verdict compared to the pre-existing approaches in this field. Our contribution stands out from related works in that it incorporates a formal model of the degradation of events in the form of an access control proxy denoted as PI, interposed between a source of events and a monitor. As we see, the source of events here can contain a missing event and can contain uncertain events. Monitoring a security property on a, on a globe that contains missing event and uncertain events will end up with a verdict that we don't know what will be. So that is that's is the main contribution in our work is to find out what is the possible verdict that can be produced in this situation. Each concrete event input to the proxy is modeled by the proxy as a completely defined possible word. The action of the proxy has the effect of potentially turning a unique word into a set of such words or, delete, or deleting events altogether. In other words, each input event to the proxy is exposed to several kinds of information degradation to replace any missing or uncertain values by other possible values. This results in a number of possible replacements of the corresponding event. Each input event is a set of possible replacement. Each output event is a set of possible replacement events of the corresponding input event. We call the output event a multi-event because it is composed of a multiple events rather than one individual event. In our approach, we use word preservation concept to represent the events. Each event represents a set of atomic propositions to which we assign a truth value from the domain B2. That is, we assign either top or bottom, in other words, either a true or false value to each atomic proposition in evaluation. We denote evaluation using the symbol omega. Each input event to the proxy represents one valuation and the proxy, for example, if the set of input symbols is A, B and C, a possible event, a possible input event or a possible word is like this, where each of the atomic propositions A, B, and C is assigned a truth value from domain B2. This input event, we call it one omega or one valuation. The proxy can replace each input event, 
each input symbol with a propositional formula, with a propositional formula phi, such as, for example, phi equal a disjunction b. This depends on the kind of degradation the proxy seeks to apply over the input event. The resulting output event is v. It is a multi-event composed of a set of valuations based on the degradations done by the proxy. The proxy is equipped with several degradation functions that we defined which apply different kinds of degradation to each current event. The following formal representation shows us a proxy phi1 taking as input a trace of events v1 till vn and applying the degradation function f on each current event. Here the, the current event is vn to which we apply the degradation function f. We give an example of some degradation functions that the proxy makes. For example, starting by the function f1, this function seeks to model any missing or uncertain or corrupted values that may exist in an event by altering the set of valuations of an input event. It means that for every input valuation omega, two corresponding valuations is ejected, where one valuation assigns it true to the variable a, and the other valuation assigns a value false to the variable a. F1 can also be explained as follows. Neither F1 of E satisfies A, nor F1 of E violates A, where E is the input event. Hence, in the output event, we can no longer conclude anything about the value of the variable A in the input event. Here we have F1 of E is the output event that the proxy emits after processing the input event E. This is equivalent to a representation of uncertainty using a 30 truth value unknown, which is usually used in the previous works. Another case is to encounter a non but missing event. That is, an event whose occurrence is known or has been deduced, for example, by observing ga gaps in indexes or after a database request has been denied, but whose content is completely missing. This can be represented in our model by an event that contains all valuations. The case of flow shading that I talked about at the beginning of this video can be modeled using such a mechanism. Looking at this formal representation of a proxy phi 1 prime, we can see that whenever an event Vn is similar to the previous event Vn minus 1, we see that the proxy removes Vn and replaces it by the symbol uppercase omega. To symbolize a missing, to simply, so to simply, uh, to represent a missing event. Whereas when v n is different from v n minus one, the event is not removed. In this way, the proxy compresses the trace as done in a load shedding process by removing all the stuttering events. Alter alternately, a proxy could emit and discard events in an alternating fashion to represent a form of systematic preemptive load shedding. One can also imagine variations over this basic mechanism, 
For example, the proxy could output all events until the occurrence of some trigger of some trigger that activates load shedding while some other trigger returns the proxy to normal operation. So far, the examples of degradation we have shown apply in an independent manner to a single input variable or signal at a time. Correlated uncertainty occurs when deterioration of information is applied in a way that depends on more than one input variable. For example, the function F3 seeks to model the correlated uncertainty as follows. It swaps the assignment of the variables A and B in evaluation omega. Then, an input multi-event that supports the variable A is it transformed into an output multi-event that supports the weaker proposition A disjunction B. And similarly, for events where B holds, they will be transformed into output events where the disjunction where the A disjunction B holds. In other words, it is no longer possible to conclude precisely whether the variable A is true or the variable B is true, only that at least one of them is true. This situation cannot be accounted for in any of the models we surveyed in our related work section. In three valued logics, they reason about this by stating that the occurrence of both variables A and B is unknown. In most of the previous works, this has been modeled using over approximation In the presence of a proxy and the emission of multi-events, we encounter a new type of monitor that should process multi-events instead of individual events. Each of the proxy and the monitor is represented as an extension of a Mealy machine. We call it propositional machine, which is a special type of finite state machine with some changes made this, to the input symbols and the transitions in order to fit to our approach. Both of the uh, both pair of propositional machines, I mean the proxy and the multi-monitor, form our access controlled monitor framework. The following simple example shows an access controlled monitor composed of a proxy denoted as pi A and a multi-monitor denoted as pi M. The proxy takes as input symbols from the set A and applies the degradation function F to each input event. The output of F is the output of the proxy and which will be the input to the multi-monitor pi M. The multi-monitor will emit either bottom verdict or top verdict or epsilon which represents neither uh, top nor bottom using a dot above a symbol means that the input is evaluation where only this symbol holds for example a dot means that the the, the input is evaluation where a holds whereas the symbols b and c do not hold Given an input trace to the proxy a dot b dot c dot a dot, the proxy apply the gradation function f3 that we described before, which represent which represent the, cor the correlated uncertainty, and replaces each input event a where a holds by an output event where a does junction b holds and each b event where each event and each input event where b holds with a with a with evaluation where a disjunction b holds and all the events c dot remains the same this is the output trace of the proxy which will be input to the monitor, to the multi-monitor. Starting by processing the input event C dot, the monitor will stay at the state one. Then processing the event A dot disjunction B dot, 
the monitor will move in two directions or in two unit projections one unit projection towards the state two and another one towards the state three and so on until processing the whole sequence at the end the monitor will end up in 8.8 unit projections where each unit projection ends in a verdict. One of the unit projections is the one passing through the states 1, 2, 4, and 5 and emitting the verdict bottom. Another unit projection passing through the states 1, 3, 6, 6 and producing the verdict top. So for each multi-event processed, the monitor goes into multiple unit projections and produced multiple verdicts. We introduced a new algorithm that lifts a multi-monitor from a classical monitor to allow for the processing of multi-events and emitting of multi-verdicts. The algorithm also quantifies the multi-verdict by estimating the likelihood of occurrence of every single verdict in the output multi-verdict. It counts the number of unit projections ending in each individual verdict at each time a multi-verdict is produced. And this quantification is done in the, uh, on the fly. An implementation of propositional machines has been realized in the form of a Java library that extends the beep beep event stream processing engine. The library is open source and publicly available. The repository of the propositional machines can be accessed on GitHub. In order to test our approach, we made two sets of experiments. The experiments are made of a number of scenarios. Each scenario has a specific source of events, an access proxy, and a property to be monitored. And in each scenario, the MIDI machine differs in the number of states and the number of transitions. We used four scenarios as described in this table. Each scenario describes a different kind of degradation that the proxy makes. The first set of experiments aims to test the effect of the presence of access control proxy and the lifting of the multi-monitor in terms of throughput and memory consumption, where throughput is the number of events ingested per unit time. In terms of throughput, the results show that the inclusion of access proxy induces a slowdown on the monitoring process. This is because the monitor is handling multi-event instead of unique event per time. However, this slowdown is very slight and seems to indicate that the handling of multi-events does not impose too large overhead on the performance of the monitor. In terms of memory consumption, the impact is less noticeable, even though the presence of the multi-monitor does increase the maximum amount of memory consumed with respect to a classical monitor consuming single events. This increase is, rel is relatively negligible and never exceeds a factor of 1.5. Our modeling of imprecisions and uncertainties can account for finer grained access restrictions than, than can only be expressed by over approximation in the state of the art. That is because the over approximation increases the number of possible words emitted by the proxy and this will affect the throughput as well as the verdict produced by the monitor. To better highlight the impact that such approximations can have on the performance of a monitor, a second set of experiments is made, where in each set we describe two proxies, a proxy that, like the one used in our approach, and a second, approxy, a, pro, a, pro, a second proxy, which is an over approximation of the first one. The results show that the use of over approximation and the large number of possible words it handles cause a negative impact on throughput. Moreover, this over approximation impacts the precision of the verdict returned by the monitor. It could not produce a definite verdict. For some scenarios, the over approximation produces three different verdicts, whereas our proxy produces one definite verdict. 
As a conclusion, we presented a flexible model that can study the effect of various kinds of degradation on the monitor's verdict, and we compare our model to the over approximation used in the state of the art and show that our, our approach is better in terms of throughput and memory consumption compared to the finer modeling presented in this framework, we, we can find out that our framework is better than that. Okay. So, okay. Um, welcome everybody to this uh, final session of uh, Formalize on this uh, for us Friday afternoon, from people Friday morning. Uh, and I'm here with uh, Rania Talab, who uh, just uh, presented uh, the first paper of the session. Uh, welcome, Rania. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat yet, but of course you can still ask them. Uh, Rania, in the meantime, I have a few questions uh, for you. Uh, first, could you tell me what is the difference between a normal melee machine and the extended uh, melee machine you used? Uh, can you elaborate okay. a bit on that? Okay. Uh, as we know, a uh, normal uh, milli machine is a special kind of finite state machine where uh, the transitions are marked with the input and output uh, variables of the machine. Uh, in our framework, as, on my as on, I mentioned in the video, uh, we use two milli machines, one to represent uh, the proxy and uh, another uh, machine to represent uh, the, the monitor. And uh, I, we, call it, uh, we call it a propositional machine because it, it is going to deal with the propositional formula. Uh, so and we and we merge the two machines so that the output of the of the proxy will be input to the uh, to the monitor. Uh, this is a first uh, difference that we use a composite uh, milli machine, not just a simple uh, milli machine. Another main difference is that in our uh, milli machine, the transitions are marked by propositional formula, uh, and and, uh, and the monitor to state and will determine which output is the transition to choose based on uh, this uh, formula. So this is second main uh, difference between our uh, machine and uh, the normal uh, MIDI machine. Okay, thank you very much for that. I see there's a question now by, uh, by Simon and uh, there's been uh, some discussion on that already by, uh, uh, by, by, by uh, Sylvain. Uh, the question is, um, Simon is wondering whether one could imagine extending your model with delays, and by that he means if the information is missing at the moment where it should be, but does it arrive later. Uh, and, yes. What does arrive later? Is the question yes. clear to you? Uh, I, I, I think he means he means if we are if we are working as an online runtime verification, uh, whereas in our case we have an offline. Uh, we have a, a catalog of uh, events uh, already available before starting, uh, before starting to uh, to process the events. So um, so I we, we will not miss an events at current time and find it later. Okay. Well, I hope uh, that that answer is clear to uh, to Simon. Um, ah, here, is, uh, here is the professor Silvana Lay. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. We could imagine that. Yes. Mm. Okay, Simon is happy, I think. So that's uh, that's good. Okay. Uh, another question for me: How can the uh, the multi monitor determine the next states when processing uh, processing a multi multi event? Uh, so as uh, as I mentioned before, each the machine, machine in the, will be uh, will be marked by a propositional formula. Uh, so any event coming uh, as an input to a state of the machine. Uh, will uh, uh, it, it is called evaluation. Each event input valuation. It should belong to the set of valuations uh, that satisfies the, the 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 propositional formula found in an output edge of the of this state. And this way, the monitor will will move from one state to another. Um, uh, note that the monitor can move to more than one state. For example, 
if the input evaluation belongs to the set of evaluation satisfying more than one propositional uh, propositional formula founding in more than one output edges of of the state uh, the monitor will uh, will go in more than one di uh, will go in more than one output uh, one output transitions that means more uh, the monitor Will go in more than one run. We call each run a unit projection, which will end uh, with a with a specific uh, verdict. Uh, so we have multiple unit projections, and we will we will end up with the multiple uh, verdicts. That's why we call uh, our monitor a multi monitor. Okay, uh, I see. Will we be transferred to the discussion room uh, next? So we'll wait for that. I have another question there. 